Ebionism is the second heresy that we're covering in the Allison book. Ebionism belongs to a family of heresies known as adoptionism. Adoptionism believes that Jesus Christ was born a biological human being, the son of Joseph and Mary, and was somehow adopted into divinity. Jesus somehow achieved something which made him worthy of being made divine by God. And for the Ebionites, they would argue that Jesus Christ lived life in perfect obedience to the Jewish law, and that made him worthy of being adopted into divinity by God the Father. And therein lies the cruelty for us human beings. Why? If you look at the Jewish law itself, in Leviticus, in Deuteronomy, the interpretations of the Jewish law in the Talmud, where you take a passage from scripture and the rabbis make commentaries and commentaries on the commentaries. It's a very rich body of knowledge. You will find how elaborate the Jewish law is and how difficult it is to live by. That's why you have rabbis who help people interpret and live according to the life of the law. And the reason why this law is so elaborate and so strict and so difficult to live by was because God wanted to make sure that his people, the Israelites, the Jews, lived according to God's law alone and not the laws of other human beings, to coach them out of living life under the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Greeks, the Romans. Instead of being enslaved by a human law, a human body of laws that can change at any, at any time to serve the interests of those in power, the Jewish law, by being God's law, is the only true means of freedom for the Jew. Because if God is loving and just, his law alone is trustworthy. That this is not some sort of power relationship going on where you are serving the interests of the powerful. Basically, God is serving your interests as his people by giving you this loving and just law. So, Jesus Christ lives this law perfectly. It sounds good, but there is also a problem. And here is the question. If Jesus Christ, to be accepted by God, to be adopted by God, had to live this law perfectly, then what must we do to be accepted by God, to be loved by God? Pause this video and think about it as to how this is cruel. Okay, you've paused the video for a couple of minutes, a few minutes, and you've talked amongst yourselves and your classmates back in your dorm or on the phone or at home. And I hope you realize how Ebionism is cruel. If they are right, then the Christian life becomes an exercise in futility because you're being asked to practice the impossible. You're asked to practice perfection. Now here we need to take a proper understanding of what sin is. Sin means to fall short, to miss the mark, to fall short of God's perfect standard. A popular way of explaining sin is the archer who shoots the arrow and it doesn't always hit the center target, doesn't always hit the bullseye. The arrow sins and falls wide of the mark. Well, we human beings always fall wide or short of the mark in some way, shape, or form. We can be good people, but our sin causes us to fall short of God's standard. And the cruelty of this heresy is that if God demands perfection of us right now, then we cannot be saved. We cannot know God. We cannot be in communion with God. God basically holds just out of reach that standard that we cannot attain. It's like playing with a, it's like playing with a cat using a sock. You keep the sock just out of reach, and the cat keeps batting at it, keeps reaching for it. Um, God basically says, do you want salvation? Here's salvation, psych, and hold salvation back from us. A very cruel way to live. The orthodox teaching here is very important. The fact that orthodox teaching, the teaching of the church says that Jesus Christ came to us, divine and human from the word go, completely divine, completely human in every way, except for sin. And remember, sin takes away from our true human nature. Sin should not be part of our human nature. So Jesus is modeling for us how we ought to be in terms of being complete human beings. And the fact that he is 
perfectly human, and perfectly divine, and that humanity and that divinity exists in a perfect union, a seamless union. The, the natures are inseparable, but cannot be mixed together. That shows God's will for us, that God accepts us, despite our sin, accepts us in our humanity. And Jesus invites us on a journey. We are accepted in our humanity, where we are, despite our sin. But Jesus takes us on a journey where we grow. We grow in greater virtue, and Jesus models that. We grow in greater holiness, and Jesus models that. We grow so that we are sinning less and living a more perfect moral life. We grow in which we become closer to God and attain theosis, this union, this communion with God. And that's why, for Christians, the Orthodox teaching is one of hope. We are not left to be wretches for the rest of our lives. We are not always sinners. We're not pond scum, where after we're saved, we simply become accepted pond scum. No, we grow. We grow in greater levels of virtue and greater levels of, levels of holiness, and God is there accompanying us, human and divine.